Hi, and welcome to Kitchen Uncovered. I'm Chef Andrew Nicholson at the Culinary Institute of Canada. Today I have Chef Erwin McKinnon from Papa Joe's with us as our guest chef. Hi, Erwin. Hey, Andrew, how are you? I'm good. And what's uh, what do we got on the go today? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, like you said, chef at Papa Joe's restaurant, a member of the Canadian Culinary Federation. I've uh, been cooking for quite a little while, especially with the with the restaurant and whatnot, and done some competitions and things, a few mm -hmm. things with you. Yeah, we've yeah, been, we've been to a few things and we've been successful. Yes, yeah, it's been. yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's about that. Uh, today we're going to do some uh, rhubarb chutney. Okay. Uh, it's going to be served with a goat cheese stuffed chicken breast and uh, some red roasted potatoes and a nice uh, almond brown butter fiddlehead uh, dish as well for yeah, it. Kind yeah. of a spring theme. Kind of a spring theme, yeah. yeah. It's a type of dish that you typically see at the restaurant or that you could do at a restaurant or at home anywhere at all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So where do we get started with that? Well, we're going to get uh, we start with a stainless steel uh, saute pan or you can use a small sauce pot or whatever. It depends. And we fire it up there first. We want to use okay. a uh, stainless steel pan because we're working with a lot of uh, acidity here okay. uh, with vinegar and, uh, and uh, citrus juices. So we don't want to use aluminum pans Not aluminum because of the soft metal, it'll yeah, transfer. Yeah, transfer, exactly. Okay. So we have some apple cider vinegar. Okay. okay. Any particular brand or just whatever you happen to have in the cupboard, uh, this, like your best? Yeah. And I mean, you'll find after uh, doing this recipe one or two times that you can kind of uh, interchange things a little bit, acid levels and what kind you use and things okay. like that. That was a bit of uh, lemon juice. And some lime juice. Okay. And again, and if you like if you like grapefruit juice, you like uh, orange juice or yep. whatever. Yeah. Yep. You can use that, any of those. And you could use white wine instead of the apple cider too. If you absolutely. Want to absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the sour element of the uh, okay. chutney. Okay. Next, we're going to add the uh, the sweetness to it. So right. I like to use a brown sugar. Right. It's going to uh, help to keep the chutney a little bit tighter. It's not mm -hmm. as uh, once it reduces and cooks and whatnot, it's going to uh, help the chutney not be so. Watery sure, and caramelize and tighten caramelize up a little, little bit faster, make it a little things little like bit that. More, more yeah, texture and sweetness. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So a little bit of sweet and sour. So what? What is just to explain to the viewers? What is a chutney? Well, chutney is uh, usually a fruit-based uh, type of a sweet and sour type. It's like a relish, but it's they call it chutneys because it's usually made with fruit. Okay. Um, okay. It can have different acid, sweet and sour levels depending yeah. on on your uh, preference. Okay. And uh, in this particular chutney here, I add a little bit of spice, a little mm -hmm. bit of heat to it all. And the types of the earthy type tones of the spice that you right. use, you can change too. Just Next, I'm going to add a little bit of freshly uh, uh, ground or minced ginger. Ginger. Yeah. So ginger and red onion. Yeah. Now a lot of the recipes we do, we we sweat off the onions and stuff. I know this time you started this with the acidity and you kind of boil them together. Yeah, just kind of boil everything together till it's softened. And you can see how now it's starting to reduce, and you yeah. can see that sugar starting to cook and whatnot. So we're going to add some of the uh, dry spices. Mm -hmm. We've got some allspice here. Okay. Okay. We've got some uh, ground clove. Right. And we have uh, some ground nutmeg. Nutmeg. Okay. Okay. So we've got the um, earthy flavor. So we're kind of going with the. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, uh, just a well spiced and seasoned. It goes well component. with. I mean, a lot of things go well with chicken, but this would go well with pork, or it could go well with turkey. It's something you know you could serve at Thanksgiving time, Christmas time, any, right. any year. Yeah. Any time, right? It's actually some different types of fish that this would go well with. Okay. And now we're going to add a little bit of spice to it. This is just some dried chilies. Okay. Again, you can kind of do that to, uh, to your, to your liking? liking. And now okay. that we've got a nice rolling boil on that. And you could put some jalapeno pepper in this too if you really like the heat mm -hmm. or something like that. Absolutely. You can add that or the yeah. fresh chilies, whichever yeah, you want. Yeah, you use a few pinches of dry uh, uh, cayenne pepper or something if you didn't have chilies or stuff like that. Okay. So we're just going to let that simmer a little bit. Uh, Slowly, okay. um, you don't want to uh, walk away from that too much because it uh, it will reduce quickly, and because of the sugar content in there, it can burn. Can burn, right? so quick. it can burn pretty quickly. Okay. So today we're going to use rhubarb. Okay. Okay. I got some nice uh, fresh uh, local uh, rhubarb here, and it's a, a nice, beautiful red, vibrant color. Mm -hmm. um, so do you peel your rhubarb when you do this particular recipe, or uh, for this I don't because uh, again, when you see the end product, you'll see that it's nice. Brilliant, right, bright, right, red. Okay. Um, if the rhubarb is a little bit older and uh, the outside is a little bit thick, mm -hmm. as you can see, you can peel it. But okay. for this recipe, for this, not necessarily. We're going to leave it. Uh, okay. So just give it a wash, wash fresh out of the garden or the rhubarb patch. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then just just dice it up. And you, yeah. this this chutney would keep in the fridge for a few days. Oh yeah. No, this this will uh, this will store really well. It'll store unpreserved, but you can. Uh, can make this in a larger batch and uh, and process it in a like for a mason jar type thing. Okay. But because of the the acid, vinegar, and sugar content that's in it, 
um, it'll keep quite a long time, especially okay. chilled. So about a week, 10 days? So just cut the them, uh, you know, we're just going to go with about a quarter inch dice here. Some okay. of these uh, we'll cut in half again, but for the most part, they're uh, they're, so fi exactly. they're fine. You just want enough. to have everything cut to the yeah, same size so it all cooks then. evenly. Yeah, exactly. Right. But we're not uh, we're not too worried about the exact uh, exact cut just right now. We just okay. want them all to be pretty even, right. which they seem to be now. And we've got and this on low to medium heat, so it's just a quick, just a nice little bubble or simmer going on. Yeah. So it's not reducing quickly, but again, I'm just sort of trying to be safe here. If I uh, if I uh, let it go too quickly, mm -hmm. and I'm not quite done dicing my rhubarb, yep. uh, I, I don't have a chance to save myself there. So, okay. so I'm just uh, taking it easy. And we're dicing up. I have like three ribs here of rhubarb. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be roughly about a cup, two cups, but two, two and a half cups. Two cups so. of chutney when we're done? Yep. Okay, and that'll serve about how many on this particular? Uh, six recipe? or eight. Six I mean, or eight, uh, pretty it's, easy? It's pretty delicious, so you might go back for seconds. Okay, you know, well, there you go, right? Same so. thing, right? So we just have... Uh, that like that. I'm just okay. going to check this. Uh, check this now. You just were looking for it to kind of turn a little bit into a syrup, okay? Right? Because if you uh, if you um, cook it not quite enough, yeah, and then you add the the rhubarb, the rhubarb. or what other fr whatever fruit you, you want to use. Like, yeah. I mean, you can use green apple. You could use uh, uh, you can use some dried fruits in there, or a combination of fresh and dried. But depending on their moisture level, okay. it will thin out your chutney right. a little bit. So you want to make sure that it is reduced down enough. Reduced to the point where you want it. So it's like a syrup, and then this will thin it a little bit. And then once it's chilled, you'll find uh, okay. it's going to be it's going to be nice. So we're just about there now. So you're just looking for it to coat the spoon or have a yeah, maple syrup consistency type yeah, of thing. Yeah, uh, maple syrup would be a good. Uh, Good way to describe okay. it. Yeah. Okay. So we're almost there now, and uh, we'll be. And if adding. you put the rhubarb in too early, it could dilute it too much and become too too watery. And, exactly. And not the right amount. Exactly. Of yeah. No, that's texture. exactly it. Yeah. Okay. So I think we're gonna wait like about another 15 seconds here. And okay. So just it, let it reduce down. So yeah. about, once we put the rhubarb in, how long will it will it take to cook at that point? Well, again, depending on the the type of fruit that you use, mm -hmm. um, it'll be. This is only going to be a couple of minutes because rhubarb is going to cook quite quickly. Okay. Uh, where something like a green apple might take a little bit longer. Right. And you don't want this to be um, mushy, for lack of a better word, or too, you too, too soft. You want to have some texture to it, but you don't want the rhubarb to stay raw. But it needs to cook, and you need to get the flavor to uh, meld in there. Okay. And you just want it to be soft enough on your on your palate because. Uh, Crunchy or al dente type rhubarb. So do we adjust the heat on this at all? We just no, leave I'm it keeping on it high medium? now. Now high, I want it heat. on high, so I want it to cook as quickly as it can. Okay. Because if it just sort of sits there and steeps, right, it's it gets more moisture is going to come out. It's just going to end up getting really, really soft. Okay. So we're just going to keep that going there. All right. So we're going to let this rhubarb sit and simmer for a few minutes, and we're going to take a quick break. But when we come right back, we're going to do goat cheese stuffing chicken breast. So don't go away. This portion of Kitchen Uncovered has been brought to you by the Culinary Institute of Canada. For more information on their programs, you can visit hollandcollege.com. Community organizations and not-for-profit groups are invited to submit their announcements for free promotion on the Community One bulletin boards. Visit us at bellalliant.net slash community one. Welcome back to Kitchen Uncovered. So today we're with Chef Erwin McKinnon. Papa Joe's restaurant. We're doing rhubarb chutney, which is just coming off the. Yeah, that's the exactly stove. where you want it, right there. Okay, and that's a nice texture. So not not raw and not overcooked no, or mushy. It's no. got to have some texture to it. Yeah, exactly. And the sugar's caramelized enough just to give it a little bit of. Yeah. Just to give it that nice sweetness and thick and just syrupiness. Yes, yeah, so you just want to let that chill. Um, okay. And like I said earlier, it's it's good for days and days in the fridge. Okay. And it's better to eat it chilled a little okay. bit because that uh, that vinegar and. Acidity is a little bit strong um, at a hot temperature. Okay. 
So we've got that, that off in the side, and that can be done a couple days ahead or in the fridge, so we just let that hang out and chill for a little while. Yep. All right. So, so now we're going to do goat cheese stuffing chicken breast. Yeah, we're going to move on to the chicken supreme. Um, awesome. You can prepare this with, uh, with the boneless skinless chicken breast. Mm -hmm. It's dependent, I guess, on which way you want to get the goat cheese in there. Right. Um, I'm going to be using um, a chicken supreme because it's a little bit more restaurant style. Right. So that the skin is on, uh, the uh, drummy is still attached, but if mm -hmm. you're using this at home, you can use a boneless skinless chicken breast. Right. And we've the changed skin our on the cutting chicken. board. We've changed our cutting board too, just in order to. Yeah, we're onto a yellow cross cutting board now. Contamination reduce reduction kind of thing. Yeah, in uh, culinary schools and in restaurants and stuff like that, you usually always need color cutting boards like blue for fish, red for meat, and yellow for chicken type thing, right? Right. If at home you don't have a yellow cutting mm -hmm. board, you can either earmark one cutting board for your raw meat preparations, mm -hmm. or you can lay down some plastic or something on on your work surface just and to, just do that tip. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we have a. Chicken supreme here, we're just going to turn it upside down and keep your hand flat and your knife flat as well. Okay. You can just use a, a small uh, paring knife or utility knife mm -hmm. uh, or a boning knife, of course, if you have such a thing. Right. And you're just making a pocket into the, in the, small meat, pocket. Of the, in the yeah. meat of the breast. Just put your thumb in there to just see that the, there is a pocket that has been formed. Okay. And then we're just going to use a small spoon. Mm -hmm. Here I have a mixture of um, uh, just a plain uh, goat cheese. Goat and cheese? Got a lot of nice fresh uh, chopped chives in there. Okay, fresh out of the garden. Fresh out you of the have, garden. You uh, have. Is there any other cheese you could do with this, or anything you could do with it? Oh, absolutely, just, absolutely. We're just you keeping can, it simple right now. You can use whatever type of cheese you want. It could be a cream cheese that's flavored. It could be, uh, you know, um, even a firmer type cheese if you wish. Right. I'm just uh, the goat is uh, blends well with the uh, rhubarb chutney. Okay. So uh, I'm just doing that. So you just get about, I don't know, it's about an ounce, ounce and a half or so. A couple of, couple of teaspoons. Stuffed in there, yeah. Yeah. If you had a piping bag at home, you could do it if the cheese was pliable. Yeah, absolutely. You could pipe that in, which would be a little bit neater and, yeah. and more accurate. And you're keeping that uh, little uh, chicken fillet that's on there, the tenderloin part of the, the chicken. Okay, that you little extra uh, meat that flaps back and forth underneath. Yeah, and yeah. it's sort of acting as a little bit of a, a seal or a uh, to cover the, keep the cheese from coming out, right? Okay, so a couple of teaspoons of the goat cheese mixture into the pocket that we made with the paring knife. Yep. Now okay. we're going to season this uh, chicken up. I have here okay. uh, a little blend of um, salt, pepper, right? Mm -hmm. And it's also got some um, some chopped chives in it as well. Okay. And a little bit of uh, Spanish paprika. Paprika in there for some smokiness? Uh, a little. Well, this is not a smoked paprika. It's just okay. a regular one. You could use a smoked paprika or a, a Hungarian style if you want, if you want it to be a little bit spicier. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, it really, uh, it's kind of a little trick of the trade if you want to know the truth. It gives, uh, <laughs> That's why we're here. gives the, the chicken a little bit more of a nice colored uh, roasted uh, look to it whenever right. it's in the pan, right? Okay. So I just need the uh, vegetable oil. Okay. Our pan is preheated here. So we start with a nice hot pan, mm -hmm. right, before you add the oil. Just like about a tablespoon or so is good. Just a grease pan. Nothing yeah. you want a shallow fry in, just enough to grease yeah, the pan. Exactly. Would you use butter or would you uh, want no, to butter has, use oil for this? Butter has too uh, too low of a smoking point. Like it just it burns really, really quickly. Right. So and I, I need sure I need this high to, heat to, to get sizzle, the sear. yeah. So you just test it, you know what I mean? Some people put a little dab of water in there or something like that, but I just touch the breast in it. You right. know it's gonna start to start to cook. Right. And when people heat up the pans at home, sometimes they're scared of the, the oil spattering at us, but it's actually the water in the oil that that spatters. It's not the oil itself. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we're just going to get rid of our uh, dirty cutting board there now. Okay. Let's put that under here. So now that the pan was hot, you've got that sizzle happening. I've reduced the heat down quite low now. Okay. Because we don't want it to brown too, too quickly. Right. Right. If you were doing this at home for five or six people, you would obviously go through a routine of stuffing all your chicken breasts mm -hmm. and then having a, a large pan to get them all seared at the same time. Yes. But yep. we're doing a single serving at this yep. point. But You do it. Uh, do everything in sort of a, a, uh, an assembly line type thing. Okay. Get all that messy work done first, stuff it. You can stuff that a little earlier in the day. You could even uh, stuff it a day ahead, right? Yeah. Just yeah. put it in the fridge. Until once it's wrapped, you put it in the fridge, you're good to go. And once it's fully cooked whenever it's over. So we're all gonna actually gonna do some little uh, red roasted potatoes okay. with, the, with the chicken. Um, like I said, this is sort of a restaurant style type thing, something that you could do or I would do in my restaurant. Yeah. So I got some red roasted potatoes here and we're just gonna uh, season these with a little bit of salt and pepper. So is there a reason we use the smaller potatoes rather than the, the great, the big, big ones or Yukon Gold well, or something like it's, that? It's all timing everything together. Okay. Uh, if you had a, a really large potato, it would take longer to cook 
than the chicken supreme itself, right? Okay. We're also going to use a little bit of fresh thyme today. Okay. Yeah. We're going to just take some fresh thyme. Uh, fresh herbs are great. Uh, I prefer them over dry. Yeah. Uh, but they do work differently in recipes. Yeah. They're a little uh, bit stronger when they're dried you know, up. You noticed in the chutney recipe I used uh, dry spices and things like that. Mm -hmm. But for herbs I prefer a fresh. So we're just going to take a few little sprigs. So you could use dried thyme in this recipe if, or dried herbs. You could, herbs but if I, you I'd use a lot less if I was. Right. Okay. So the potatoes here, I actually have a mixture of, uh, I'm cheating a little bit too as well. Okay. Uh, I have a little bit of sugar in here. A little bit of sugar? Only a very small amount, right? Just to add a little extra sweetness and caramelization to it? Caramelization, because uh, as I was told as a young chef uh, by an experienced chef, color is flavor. So if you get things with a nice caramel, nice yep. brown on them and stuff like that, they're really, really nice. Right. So we're going to just uh, make sure that chicken is loose in the pan, which yeah. it is. So we just put the potatoes right in the pan with, right the, the, with pan the chicken with that and the oil. oil. Yeah. We're just going to get them to brown up just a little bit. Okay. And then turn we're going to up a little bit. Then there. we're going to turn them over. And after we turn them over, um, we're going to uh, put the fresh thyme on there, and we can season the uh, back side of these just a little bit too. Okay. So do we need to do we need to flip the chicken at all to cook on the other side, or do we need to we just kind of let it go on the skin side? Well, actually, uh, you know. We, I think we were all taught maybe uh, as chefs that um, you um, use the fat side up, like always use the fat side up, fat side up. But I find if you turn the chicken in the hot pan that this, this raw, tender uh, white meat underneath, yep. it gets kind of dried out and a little bit hard, and yep. kind of hard to cut through. So for the short amount of time that it's going to be in the oven, I always leave it skin tied down. So when we turn it over, it'll be a nice crispy. a nice crispness yeah. on the skin, yeah. and then your, your, your meat is you know, caramelized yeah, nice and seared. Browning there now. Just turn that heat back down again a little bit. Okay. Turn these so this potatoes. could be a, for a little bigger saute pan for two people. You could do this as a one, one pan, one yeah. pan meal for yeah. two Yeah, well this, this is to be something that we do in the restaurant now if, I, if an order come in from the dining room yeah. for a uh, goat cheese stuffed chicken supreme, red roasted potatoes, and the uh, chutney, this is like something we could do right to order. Perfect. You know, for the customer. Perfect. It's starting to smell good already with right. fresh thyme and everything going so on. So we're, we're good to go. We're ready so, for the oven. So, so it's going to take about, uh, about 10, 12 minutes in the oven. 10, for everything minutes. For the chicken to cook through for, thoroughly and for the potatoes to get roasted. And you just cook, let's leave it in the pan, put the whole pan and everything in the just oven. Just like that, yeah. And what temperature is your oven at? Uh, about 375. 375? Yeah, it could be a bit varied between your home oven and, and work oven, but about 375. 400 at the very most. All right, it's great. Right. Okay, so we're gonna let everyone put that in the oven and we're gonna take a quick break. So when we come back, we're gonna do brown butter and almond fiddleheads. This portion of Kitchen Uncovered has been brought to you by the Culinary Institute of Canada. For more information on their programs, you can visit hollandcollege.com. Welcome back to Kitchen Uncovered. I'm Chef Andrew Nicholson at the Culinary Institute of Canada. Today with our guest chef, Chef Erwin McKinnon. Today, Erwin, we've done the uh, rhubarb chutney. Mm -hmm. We've got it off chilling onto the side. We've yep. got our goat cheese stuffed chicken breast and roast potatoes going in the oven. Mm -hmm. yep. So where are we at now? What do we, what's so Just to finish off step? the dish, again with uh, some of the springtime theme or whatever, with some of the local things that we have. Mm -hmm. We've got some uh, fresh fiddleheads here. Uh, they've been blanched. Um, and what before does blanched head? mean? Well, they've been, uh, it's, it's a, a cooking technique that uh, can be referred to as a lot of things. It can be done in oil, it can be done in water, whatever. It could be blanching french fries or blanching fish or it could be blanching vegetables or pasta or whatever. It's bringing it to a cooking point that you're 
happy with prior to service or prior to what you need to do with it, and then stopping and shocking uh, to stop right. that cooking process. And it's usually, uh, you know, in this instance with the vegetables and whatnot, it's usually in a nice rolling, boiling, uh, salted water. Mm -hmm and you don't want to crowd the water, you want right. to cook them kind of quick, and then have some ice water next door to you, and it helps to retain their color, brings that uh, chlorophyll out to the surface. And, uh, and then we and don't cook the outside too much while we're cooking while we're cooking them to finish for the plate. Right, exactly, okay. exactly, yeah, because if, if you put them in, the, in this particular dish raw, everything else would be too far gone before these would actually be cooked. Right, right. so we just blanch them ahead of time just to kind of yep. make, it easy, make life easier. Yeah, so okay. we're just going to fire up the pan. Um, and this is gonna. This is so. I call this, or this is just a, a pretty classic uh, a dish or preparation. It's brown buttered almond uh, fiddleheads, right? You can do this. It's done typically with a lot of different greens, like mm -hmm. spinach and things like that. Yeah. So we got some uh, some butter here. You can use salted, unsalted, doesn't really matter. So we're just looking for butter for the flavor. So in the chicken breast, we need the high heat and the oil. We didn't want the branding, but the, here we're using a little bit lower heat, and we want more of the flavor of the butter. Exactly, right? exactly. We have a, a better control over what's going to happen here. Okay. So we just put some of this uh, uncooked raw butter in here. Um, we're going to throw the almonds in, which are again raw, just blanched almonds. There's no, they haven't been toasted or anything. Right. Because they're going to toast in the butter. And you could do slivered, or, or we have slivered here, but we could do sliced or whole almonds for this dish, if you wanted to. Yeah, it on what would, you it happen would to have. There's no very the. The sliced <coughs> almonds would uh, brown a little bit quicker because okay, yep. quite thin, yep. but if that's what you had, absolutely. And you don't have to just use almonds, you could use some other nut. So once you see the sizzle start to happen there, mm -hmm. you want to keep the pan uh, moving and agitated every now and again. It doesn't have to be constant, yep. but what happens is the milk solids in the butter will sit or, or fall to the bottom of the pan and right. they'll just sit there and they'll, they'll want to burn. Um, so you have to keep it a little bit agitated. So when you refer to, to brown butter, that's what we're trying to brown, right? Is the milk solids in the butter. And we're just yes. trying to get that, that hazelnut Yeah, and, flavor. and it comes up with a really, really nice nutty type <clears throat> flavor, even without the nuts. But the nuts is just a little added texture. Yeah. Uh, and again, goes well with the rhubarb, goes well with the, uh, the goat cheese and whatnot, yep. right? So where, do we, where, do, where would we find fiddleheads and what, what kind of are the fiddleheads? Uh, well, they're pretty common <clears throat> around these parts. Uh, and they're this time of year or early spring um, is when they come out. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just the, the kind of the unmatured bud of, uh, of a fern in the forest. Right. And if you have the time and patience, you can go looking for them. And, and, and if you look are. at them, they look just like a fiddle head. Right? Yeah, they're and like the head of a fiddle. fiddle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, or a violin or whatever. And as they grow, they uncoil into a, into a thing. Right. So you can hear that uh, butter starting to yeah. snap and the nuts. You, you smell can the see, aroma too you can a little see bit. see it browning too. there nicely as well. Yeah. Okay, so now we're ready to go. We'll put the fiddle heads in. Just put enough in for like one portion there. Okay, we give it a quick saute. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. And in this particular instance, I used a salted butter. So I'm just going to add a little bit of pepper. No more additional salt. Okay. And again, they, they've been... Uh, the salted butter has a natural flavor, so... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So... And just when you're pretty confident that the uh, fiddleheads are cooked or warmed through, which they would be yeah. in that short of time, I have a little bit of lemon juice. Okay. okay. What's the lemon juice doing for, it's just, for the step? It's just kind of stopping that, that cooking process a little bit, right? Adds a nice little bit of uh, acidic blast to the dish. Mm -hmm. It really helps the flavor of the uh, fiddleheads pop out. And then, as you can see, it kind of cool the pan down. Cools the pan so, so the butter the stops, not, doesn't go any farther. Exactly, yeah. But it's, exactly. it's still got some heat in the pan so it'll just carry on through. Yeah. And because we blanched the fiddleheads, we don't need to worry about having them. We just need to get them hot throughout. Yeah, that's so the whole blanching. You get it just to the point where you're happy where it could just handle a little bit more heat or cooking yeah and then you shock it in ice water perfect perfect so now i think we'll Easy. check on that chicken okay you go check Ch in the chicken yeah it should be done and for more information on today's recipes or past episodes of kitchen uncovered check out our website kitchenuncovered.com and the chicken the stuffed chicken breast just came out of the yeah it looks good to me yeah we'll have a little look it's beautiful it smells great too so yeah oh, we're yeah, nicely brown the there Okay, we're just gonna let it rest there for one second while we get the plate, whatever, it's kind of okay. important. So, so when, you, when you do a roast chicken breast or anything like that, or roast beef, it's important that we let it rest after yeah. it comes out of the oven for yeah. a few minutes, right? Yeah, the different meat proteins react a little bit uh, differently. Meat is probably, red meat is probably the most important. Uh, chicken, still like to let it rest a little bit, but it just lets those, because uh, the, the juices and all the heat from the oven is compressing a lot of the juice into the center of the meat. Right. Right. So you need to let it rest so that they can it can relax and come back out to the surface again, um, because you don't want to cut into hot meat too 
to uh, All right, that's it. when you get the you slice of beef, if you've ever done it at home, you get the dryness on the outside, and then you get to the center, and that's all the juices kind of start spilling all over your board. So yeah, yeah, exactly. You let it rest, that yeah. disperses a little more evenly, and you get juicy throughout. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, poultry is a little bit more forgiving, mm -hmm. but, you know, the red meat, like I said, is really the most important, but it's right. all good to let it rest a little bit. Plus, okay. we want to let the, the, the filling inside the cheese, it's sort of like, uh, you know, caution filling is hot. You don't want to cut it too, too quickly. Right. It'll kind of all want to molt it out on you a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, and the reason we did the pocket with this was because of the cheese filling that we didn't want to run all over the, the pan. We wanted to keep it contained in the chicken breast. Yeah. Whereas if we butterflied it, we could have a lot of seams and the, the melted hot cheese could exactly. more, just more spill out into the pan. To, to escape, yeah. yeah. Depending on your filling, if it wasn't cheese, if it was something like uh, bread type stuffing mm -hmm. or something that's not going to, uh, to uh, have too much moisture or whatnot, uh, that would be fine. Right. Yeah. yeah. Good. So we're just going to give it a quick little slice here. All right. It smells delicious. All right. You can see the nice uh, goat cheese stuffing uh, inside there, right? Yeah. So now if this was at the restaurant, we'll be doing this. We're going to lay out our roasted potatoes, All right? Mm-hmm. Could you do anything with the font in the pan like that? If you it's... could. If, we were, if we're going to make a sauce or whatever, like a lot of this brown bits and stuff like that would be delicious for that, right? Right. But, uh, because we're using the chutney today. Yeah. So I'm just going to let that rest there for a second. And you okay. Pass me the chutney. I'm going to put down a little... Uh, so this is the chutney after it's been uh, cooled, right? So you can see how it's firmed up oh, now. Oh, yeah. That's the, that's the caramelized brown sugar that yeah. that we had in there, kind of keeping the texture yeah. and So we just have a nice, nice bead of that on the plate. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Delicious, delicious. We're going to set our chicken breast here. Beautiful. Right there, we're going to expose that a little bit. Take a serving spoon there, slot it one. Great. Mm -hmm. And we'll put on our fiddleheads. Beautiful. Nice, fresh, early spring kind of. Yeah, yeah, delicious. Nice textures. And you could use uh, asparagus or any kind of vegetable you wanted for this dish yeah, as well. Like it yeah, just, it'll go nice with the... the brown butter and the nuts land well to, to a green type of vegetable. Mm -hmm. uh, be it, uh, me, be it um, spinach or yeah. asparagus or could be Brussels sprouts or something like that. And we could just lay a little thyme on here. Beautiful. Just as a garnish. And there you go. Right Our goat cheese stuffed chicken supreme with roasted red potatoes, brown butter almond fiddleheads, and Beautiful. Thanks, Sherwin. Appreciate you being on the show today. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. I'm Chef Andrew Nichols of the Culinary Institute of Canada. For any information on today's show or recipes, check out our website, kitchenuncovered.com.